For the purpose of telling the Malaysian growth story, let's go back to the 70s. In 1970, Malaysia was a low-income nation. Our per capita income at that time was 1,070 ringgit, with 49.3% of our population, which is 10.9 million people, considering considered poor, attracting a total of only 212 million ringgit of foreign investments. Now, from the 80s into the 90s, we started to see a surge in economic growth, propelling us to a middle-income status. We had fantastic growth rates, averaging about 9% in the early 90s. However, from 2000 onwards, we started to see our economic growth starting to decline. And the slowing down of that from an average of originally 9% in the 1990s to just 4.6% between the year 2000 and 2010. Now, many countries that started at just the same base as Malaysia, they started then to overtake us. Countries like South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore quickly broke away to grow their economy to hit high income levels by the year 2000. Now, what did these countries do? You may want to ask. In the labs, in the workshop that we did, we look at all these countries that have successfully made. Two points stood out. They were about focus and competitiveness. The point was, those countries that focus on the areas that they were naturally strong in, and then they make sure that they create the conditions for them to be competitive in those areas of focus. That led us to a very important, if you like, a very big question. How can we have that focus? And what can we then do to ensure that we are competitive? So, Pomandu, we brought in this new technology, we call it a technology, that means we ran workshops and in labs, we got a lot of people to participate, private sector people and also public sector folks that came together. We asked them to answer big questions and we asked them to analyze the data and to come with proposals, with very specific action items and projects, with clear targets set out for those projects, and with timelines that we set out for them. To become a high-income nation, we need drivers to ensure focus on the impact areas, and, and these are the national key results areas. These national key results areas are very important for us to make sure that uh, our government transformation program will succeed. Then a year later, in the year 2011, the economic transformation program was born. And this was aimed to ensure that we identify the key areas where Malaysia can attract private investments and compete globally. For the purpose of this session, I will focus on the economic transformation program. In the economic transformation program lab process, we identified 11 key economic sectors and one geographical area, which is Greater Kuala Lumpur. Why did we do that? It's simply because those 12 areas of focus were the ones that will give us the lion's share for our gross national income. We also needed to be competitive. So we have to create the conditions that allow companies to be competitive in the global market. And this is what we will do. We will then make sure that we'll have the six areas that are cross-cutting, we call them strategic reform initiatives that we will implement. But I will spend more time to talk about this later. For now, I will call these measures the true north. We will need to grow our gross national income to reach 1.7 trillion ringgit by the year 2020. And for this to happen, we need investments. You cannot have a growth in the economy without investments. The total amount of investments that we envisage that we need to have between now and the year 2020 is 1.4 trillion ringgit. That's a lot of investments that we need to put in place. A third thing. The third thing is to create 3.3 million new jobs. Why do we need to create jobs? You know, if you have a lot of gross national income, you do not have the jobs, there's no way you can share the prosperity of the nation with the public. So we need to create those jobs. Now, let me talk about what we have implemented in just one year of implementation. I can tell you the achievement in just one year 
is nothing short of astounding. The achievement was equivalent or akin to a vertical takeoff, if you think about it's an airline. The 12 key economic areas achieve 23% above the set KPIs. The set target of 23%, if you say that's the target, we achieve 23% above the target. The confidence created has had an immediate knock-on effect on the economy. In fact, according to the latest 2011 data by the Department of Statistics and also Bank Negara, private investments at 94 billion ringgit are the highest in five years. In fact, also our GNI, the Gross National Income, at 830 billion ringgit surpass our target that we set of 797 billion ringgit. So that's fantastic for us. In fact, that number of 830 billion ringgit is the highest GNI that we've achieved since independence. We also saw foreign direct investment increase by 12.3% and to achieve 32.9 billion ringgit. The highest we've we achieved actually in 10 years. Now, when you look at our total trade, our trade numbers grew at a phenomenal pace at 8.7%, considering the global economy was going through a slowdown and uh, we, we, re we reached a new height of 1.27 trillion ringgit last year. In fact, in our history, there were only two times, that means two years in our history, that have reached the same number. Focus and competitiveness are critical to the success of our future. The challenge here is to continue to build that momentum and keep the eye on the ball and stay that course. I can tell you no athlete can be a world champion if he or she wants to be a champion in every event. The next eight years will be very exciting, in my view. Every Malaysian and everyone living in Malaysia has a role to play, either small or very big, in this journey. Find out how you can benefit from the initiatives, whether it is to better your career or your jobs, to create bigger and better business opportunities for yourself and your company, or even just to understand how things can get better and how we can improve. Thank you.